Welcome back, listeners. I'm Robin Black. This is It's All About Healing Podcast. Today, I'll be interviewing Victoria Fitch. She is called the Heart Healer. She's going to be talking to us today about inner childhood healing. How are you today, Victoria? I'm well. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem at all. So can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Yes, yes. Um, They call me the heart healer, and I'm sure we'll get into why they call me that as the episode proceeds. So make sure you stick around and find out how that is. I I specialize in inner child healing, uh, which deals with emotional trauma from a parent. It could be emotional, it could be physical. And I help you see what you've been suppressing all these years. I help you remove that mask and actually live a life of freedom from toxicity, from lack, from feelings of unworthiness and not enough. I'm certified as an international practitioner by the uh, International Board of Coaches and Practitioners. I'm also certified as a international practitioner of holistic medicine and also cognitive behavior life coach certifications. I got a few more, but those are the ones that matter for today. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. So tell us a little bit about your experience with inner childhood healing. Yes, yes. Uh, I came actually from a loving home. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel the love. I was the youngest Mm -hmm. of six children. I always felt shoved or pushed on my older siblings. When we, when I was a child, we had this small three bedroom home, uh, 900 square feet, very small for six kids and two adults. And I didn't have a place growing up. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a room. I didn't have a crib. I didn't, I had nothing of my own as a child. And I would go with whoever would take me. Mm -hmm. And there was a morning where my parents asked me to leave their room because that's where I was most of the time. And I left their room. I was like two years old. Imagine a child in diapers still, toddler, Mm -hmm. just a toddler. And I left my parents' room. I went to my sister's room. They told me to get out. I went Mm -hmm. to my brother's room. They told me to get out. Here I am. I'm just a two-year-old baby. All mm-hmm. I knew to do was to go and sit by my parents' door. Yeah. I abandoned, unwanted. Nobody loved me. My mm-hmm. little legs drawn up to my chest. That little girl sat by her parents' door for over five zero years, 50 years. Oh, wow. Girl. And that's that inner child in me. Yeah, that there for 50 years. I became a people pleaser. Oh, if I just do this, they're gonna like me. And, uh, and and this is what we do when we've experienced feelings of unworthiness or abandonment. Because this was mine. Right. Abandonment, mm-hmm. unworthy, not nobody wants you around. That's what I grew up thinking. And when I was sitting on the side of the bed, fast forward 2017, not caring if I woke up the next day. Mm -hmm. I've been in and out of depression because no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't feel that validation. No matter, I was a high achiever, still am, but it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. All the accolades, it didn't matter because on the inside, I didn't feel that love. Right. And I'm sitting on the side of the bed with a bottle of pills in my hand, not caring if I woke up the next morning. Mm -hmm. Now on the outside, I have a good life. I really do. And see, that's the thing. On the outside, we have this mask and we have this good life, right? I had a nice home. I have well-behaved children. I had good income, but I didn't feel any of that. None of that mattered. And I get ready to open that pill bottle. Mm -hmm. And it was like I wasn't even there. I don't know. It wasn't me. I get it. I turn the cap and I shake those pills in my hand. And just as I put them to my mouth, I hear a voice and it is like, it is right beside me. Mm -hmm. I call it the voice of the divine that I call Mm -hmm. God. And that voice said, I made you on purpose for a purpose. And this is not it. Wow. This is not it. And I mean, literally right beside me. Uh And I got up, I poured those pills out and I knew I had a heart issue. Yeah. I knew that if I felt this lonely, this 
unworthy, this not enough. There had to be others that felt the same way, that looked like they had everything. And I got busy. Um, there was a there's a famous hypnotherapist, and she was doing a and she was doing an event online. And mm-hmm. it was free. And I thought, oh, what's this hypnotherapy thing? So I went <laughs> and uh, I participated. And she was able to kind of take me back to that little girl sitting by the bed. And what would you mm-hmm. say to her? It was a regression. It's called regression. And it helped. It helped mm-hmm. a lot. Uh, and then that's when I looked more into hypnotherapy. And now I'm a master hypnotherapist. That's when mm-hmm. I looked more into it. Uh, I sought my own healing had several sessions with another hypnotherapist and she said something to me that changed my life forever. She said, Victoria, you were so busy feeling unloved. You missed all the love that was around you. Absolutely. It was so true. That's so Mm -hmm. true. And what ended up happening was um, it helped. It it helped. I was moving forward and healing is a journey. It's not yeah. a destination. This is yeah. not something where it's one and done. If you yeah. think about that little girl, that two-year-old sat there for 50 years. There's no way that in you know, a day yeah. she's all of a sudden great, right? Yeah. I, busy. <laughs> I started learning. I started following some of the greats like Les Brown, who is a friend of mine. I started mm-hmm. listening to uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And you can look these people up. And I'm mm-hmm. one of his advanced students. I'm, I'm actually a healer. Uh, with him. And I just started like, I've got to do something. I've got to help mm. these other people that are feeling and nobody knows mm. what can I do. And that's when I ended up getting all my certifications. And then I did a, a session because I still wasn't quite feeling it. You know, I still felt mm-hmm. like there's something missing. I, you know, I, I'm still not feeling validated. So I went back into a hypnotherapy session again. And when I went back, I just started t- crying. And the hypnotist said, what are you seeing? What's happening? I said, it's my dad. My mm-hmm. dad had come out of his bedroom. He didn't know I was sitting by the side of the bed. And I remember him now. He's walking me up and down the hall. He's apologizing. I didn't know you were here. But here's the thing. The emotional impact of abandonment was so much stronger. That is the emotion that I lived with and I acted upon. Mm-hmm. relationships with men who didn't want to commit to me. I'm not worthy. Well, I, right. And so we start to attract these things, right? right. And, and we right. start to look for it and we start to find things in our, inquir- in our environment to prove what it is that we're thinking. Mm-hmm. And that's how I became the heart healer. I yeah. figured other folks got to have a heart that needs healing. Absolutely. Like I've never healed a, he- a heart in my life. I just facilitate what's already within. I had it all within me. I just needed someone to help me. Right, exactly. Because we're not here to fix others. We're here to help them discover what's already inside of them. And I love that. Absolutely. Wow. I'm very sorry to hear that, but I'm glad that you overcame that. So the way that you were able to overcome is by seeing your hypnotherapist. Or were you, did you do some type of work yourself as well? Some type of self-discovery? It's all self-discovery. All Mm -hmm. hypnosis is self-hypnosis. If I Mm -hmm. tell you to close your eyes, I'm not forcing your eyes closed. Uh (laughs) (laughs) You're closing them. So Mm -hmm. no, I I got busy. I started Mm -hmm. listening to other people's stories and I started to learn. And then I started to educate myself and I started to change my environment, Mm -hmm. changing my physiology. I, I, you know, I stopped looking down and sitting like this, you know, even my voice changes. I learned, you know, sit up, look straight. My grandmother, I remember leaving my grandmother's home once and uh, my back was to her and I was walking out her gate and my grandmother, she said, that's right. Hold those shoulders back and that (laughs) head high. What I Mm -hmm. didn't understand was my grandmother was teaching me how to be confident. Right. I didn't understand that at that time. Mm -hmm. We all have to do the work. We all have to take personal responsibility for our situation. Mm -hmm. Victor Frankl said the last of humans freedom of a man's freedom is his ability to decide his attitude in any given circumstances. In Mm -hmm. his book, Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Frankl was in a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. 
and he saw atrocities, if you can imagine. Right. And um, still, he kept a positive attitude because the one thing they could not take from him was his attitude. Right. And when we go through childhood trauma, it's very difficult because those people who were supposed to protect us, those people who were supposed to love us, let us down. Yeah. They let us down. So how do you do the work? How do you get back up? How do you mm -hmm. learn to forgive? Not forget. How do you mm -hmm. learn to forgive for you? And it's by mm -hmm. doing the work yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. When we focus on understanding instead of versus being understood, that's what I feel helped me because I have to do that. I had to do that myself. And it's, I feel that it's very hard because I feel that when people seek validation and they don't get it, that's what keeps them in discouragement. Like that's what keeps them feeling unwanted because you're constantly looking outward for validation when they shouldn't. So what would you suggest, what would one of your suggestions be to stop seeking validation and to go within? I would say, as Les Brown says, you can't see the you can't see the label if you're in the can. Mm -hmm. I would say seek out help. Find mm -hmm. someone that you trust that can help you through it. I could have never gone through it alone. If you find someone to help you, but the first thing, the very, very first thing you have to do mm -hmm. is to face it. Right. You have That's to cool. know that you are in the basement of life. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get out of the basement of life is to decide you want out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the hard part because when you've experienced childhood trauma, mm -hmm. there is so much that the child buries. And so mm -hmm. the adult, like in my case, relationships, I've been in abuse. I've been a victim of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. I deserved it. Who wants me? Right. Yeah. I had to decide, make the decision that this is no way to live and this is not how I'm going to be. So that's step mm -hmm. number one mm -hmm. is recognizing it. And you gotta be willing to go to the dark places. Right. You yeah. have to be. And one of the things that I tell my clients is, I see what you don't want to show me and I hear what you don't say. Right. And I am here to guide you through the darkness because that dark space is hard. Yes. I mean, it is hard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Very hard. It's an understatement. <laughs> Very. Because that's, and what would you suggest for people who don't have anyone? Because I know when I was in my dark place, which sometimes it still comes and goes, um, I didn't have anyone. There but, are, go ahead. but the universe, right? It's like they, to me, that's where majority of my help came from was on my spiritual awakening journey. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest for those who just simply don't have anyone to go to? I would say once you make that decision, synchronicity, the mm -hmm. universe steps in. Yeah. All of a sudden, somebody will come up to you and say, hey, have you read this book? Read uh -huh. the book. Yeah. All of a sudden, you find yourself in places. You may be at the grocery store. And someone will drop a word to you and yeah. you're like, wow. That's when you become aware. Self-awareness is also important. Not Absolutely. only do you have to make that decision, you have to be self-aware. Mm -hmm. And there's so many resources out here now. There's so many things online. There are so many people who are willing just to help. Everybody, I, I, I'm going to push back just a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody has someone. Everybody, mm -hmm. there is always help out there for you. Mm -hmm. What are you reading? One of the first mm -hmm. things I ask my clients is, what are you reading and what are you listening to on the television mm -hmm. and on the radio? Mm -hmm. And your music, well, you know, I'm dating myself. I said radio. I don't uh -huh. know if people still listen to radio anymore if it's all like yeah. streaming online. <laughs> but what are you taking in? Mm -hmm. Because once you make that decision to change, you'll mm -hmm. be surprised how the things around you that are familiar, you don't want anymore. 
You don't right. want to be around mm-hmm. that. Uh, for me, I notice one of the first things is notice I can't watch violence on movies anymore. And I was one mm-hmm. of those. I love those detective shows and all of that. Yeah. But it it just it does something to my spirit. I can't mm-hmm. watch it anymore. And right. as you become more and more awakened, and if you're spiritual, uh, you know, get into your Bible or get into your Quran, Quran or get into follow the Buddha. Uh, one thing that helped me was I'm a Christian, but I also study Taoism. So there, mm-hmm. you know, get into your spiritual walk. Right. Get quiet. Mm-hmm. Be still and know that I am God. Be right. still. Yeah. And let the voices come. It's the fear. And unless you go into the darkness and let the voices come, you can't deal with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree. And that fear is very hard, especially because it's implemented all the time. And then now you can purchase fear. You know, when people go to um, haunted houses, they go see scary movies. And it's just like that fear just keeps coming in. And, and a lot of times humanity, we're the ones inviting that fear in. Mm -hmm. Um, What would you suggest uh, work for you in order to help them overcome that fear and to stop inviting that fear in? Yes. So in cognitive behavior therapy, one of the things that we always, always suggest journal, write it down, get it out of your heart, get it out of your head, journal, journal your feelings. There is so much release when you can journal it. Another thing is reframing things in your world. A lot of times when we've experienced childhood trauma, we will be very reactive. Mm -hmm. There's a part of us that feels we're always under attack. Right. Correct. Taking a step back and said, and thinking to yourself, do they really mean that? Or am I just reacting to it? Correct. Start yeah. asking yourself the questions. If mm-hmm. someone cuts me off driving down the street, I used to call them everything but a child of God. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I just send them on. Bless you. Maybe you're yeah. in a better hurry than I am. I will move out of the way. Right. Yes. You're just doing those little things. And as you start doing those little things, you may not even recognize that you're changing and involved right. that you are. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I had a problem with that. I had a huge road rage problem myself and I used to do the same thing. And now it doesn't, there's this sense of calmness. Once you kind of go through the dark night of the soul, it's just, you calm down. You're not filled with rage anymore. And that fear that keeps you worried, you know, you're constantly scrolling through your Facebook, you're scrolling through YouTube, you're that's, that's fear. That's having a sense of fear. And that's what took me forever to overcome. Are there any more suggestions that you have where people can tell that they're operating in fear, even when they feel that they aren't? Yeah, I'm going to give you some things that some indicators. Now, these are indicators that we all have. When it becomes a part of your life and you're seeing it show up day in and day out, then it's probably a result of your trauma. By the way, Trauma has to have four things for, for, here we go, (laughs) has to have four things for it to be considered trauma. And one of those things is you have to fear for your life. I work with one client who felt like every day her dad was going to take her away, throw her out the window, do something to really hurt her, feel for Mm -hmm. your life. Two, you have to, there's this letdown of those who are supposed to protect you. They don't protect you. Mm -hmm. Three, you feel very very alone. Mm -hmm. You feel very alone all the time. And then the fourth one is you don't feel you have any type of escape. Mm -hmm. You feel like you were there. That's true. Now, bad things happen to us, like uh, breaking up a relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, That doesn't, that means you broke up. It doesn't necessarily mean it was trauma as trauma is and I, and I, re- I really want to say this is because there's a lot of people and uh, y'all, I can see the emails coming, but there are many of us who feel that we've been traumatized when we really just had a bad situation. Mm-hmm. And it's important that we understand the difference, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to the work. 
So mm -hmm. what are the signs that you may have been traumatized? I told you those four, but how can, how does it show up? You react to a situation mm -hmm. and your reaction isn't called for in the way you reacted mm -hmm. in, in the situation. So you're overreacting and you're, you know, you're overreacting because mm -hmm. you're easily triggered. So that's one way. Look mm -hmm. at your relationships, not being able to maintain healthy relationships, mm -hmm. boundaries. Are you setting your boundaries? Mm -hmm. Are you constantly being the one that's getting dumped on because right. you've accepted that role? Mm -hmm. That goes along with people pleasing. Right. You are the caregiver. You take care of everybody else's needs, but your mm -hmm. own, because you don't right. feel like you're worthy and everybody right. else is more important than you are. Yeah. Sleep. Mm -hmm. You don't sleep. Mm -hmm. You find yourself emotional and you don't know why. And the nighttime mm -hmm. comes and maybe you got to drink a few glasses of wine to put yourself yeah. you over because you're overthinking everything. Absolutely. You're constantly Absolutely. judging yourself, constantly mm -hmm. judging everything you say, everything you do. So that's mm -hmm. just a few signs to look out for. Yeah, absolutely. I get that. And the way I see some relationships where people may feel that they're traumatized is the way I look at it is I look at it as they're mourning what their life would have been with that person versus mourning the loss of that person. And that's what I feel some people may feel traumatized by because they feel that a part of them is being ripped away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where it kind of brings that abandonment. Mm -hmm. But for people who are, who, who feel that they are traumatized when they are, what would you suggest? I know you said that you have to look at the situation, but what if they just aren't seeing that? What if that's impossible for them? Because sometimes when you're in that dark place, it is hard to see it. It is very hard. And I'm going to say it again. You have to find help. Find someone mm -hmm. you trust. It doesn't have to be a, someone you got to pay. Find someone you trust. Yeah. I, whether it's at the church, whether it's a friend, and we know sometimes with friends, it's kind of difficult, right? Because you're Very afraid good. that uh, people are going to use it against you. But even Jesus had to come up with some help. He had 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. He had to leave yeah. his hometown. He got yeah. here, right? Because it's like, oh, we know you, right? Yeah. And you have to really think about, you think about all of the Buddha. He, he left his wife and young child to go into the forest. Sometimes you just got to get away from people too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And isolate yourself sometimes. Sometimes in isolation is where you really find yourself because a lot of people are trying to find themselves in others. They're trying mm -hmm. to fill that void instead of actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. We always tend to look for that microwavable approach through life instead of actually taking the time to just cook, <laughs> take the time to just cook. And it takes a long time. And a lot of people don't want to find that. They want to find these short avenues. You but have to I really do the work. Do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I 100% agree with you on doing the work. And I'm very glad that you were able to figure all of it out. Well, at least you're still healing. I know you're not going to be 100% healed. But what have you been doing in the meantime? Could you all the healing, that what have you been doing? Like, like what do you do? Life or with healing? <laughs> yes, with healing. What do you do? Oh, what do I do? Uh, mm -hmm. meditation is really good that that's mm -hmm. that alone time. Um, and I always say prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to the divine, mm -hmm. uh, meditation, getting out in nature. Yes. Getting out. You know, when I tell people that even when it's snowing outside, I'm going to go put my feet in the snow. They're like, are you crazy? And I'm like learning to ground, touch a tree. You know, mm -hmm. hug a tree, walk, get out in nature so you can breathe and, and really see the majesty of life. Yes. Uh, we already talked about changing your physiology. Mm -hmm. How And, you know, oh, one thing that we did not talk about, your languaging. Mm -hmm. I am very careful with my languaging. If I catch myself saying something that mm -hmm. is not speaking life to myself or to someone else, then mm -hmm. I will rephrase that. One thing that people talk about a lot is affirmations. Mm -hmm. And affirmations don't work for many, many people. The reason why affirmations don't work is because they stop at the brain stem. 
Mm-hmm. The brain stem is saying, well, we know that's not true. Because I will help people say, I am always doing information. Why do I still feel bad? Because your subconscious is designed to protect you. Mm-hmm. And when you are have experienced trauma, when you are in fight or flight stage, most of your life, as I was, it's not getting through. It is not getting through to your prefrontal cortex, which is your logical thinking brain. Mm-hmm. It's stuck. One thing, Noah St. John did a book called Affirmations. So I mm-hmm. will do Affirmations. How is it I'm so smart? How is it mm-hmm. I'm so beautiful? How is it I'm so abundant? By asking those questions, you're, you're act, you are activating the reticular activating system in your brain, and it has to answer those questions. So now your brain is finding things to make you feel pretty. Oh, this, yeah. this fitting me pretty good today. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's another thing. Using affirmation is, is good. Yeah, yeah. Getting out in nature, being aware of your language, watching your physiology. Um, using affirmations is great too. Uh, meditation, prayer, all of those things be, will help you become aware. You can do simple things on awareness too. Absolutely. Living is in the now. One of the things we tend to do is we are dragging that past, that familiar past. That's why we keep going back because it's familiar. <laughs> it's right. not good yeah. for us, but it's familiar. And we yeah. keep dragging it with us. Or we overthink because we're afraid of the unknown future. Mm-hmm. We're afraid. If we can learn to be, in, this is the fifth tip, be in the now. Okay. Because this moment is all you have. The Absolutely. past is gone. The future isn't here yet. It may not be here. I often mm-hmm. tell my kids something comes up and I'll say, you know, if I'm not here, it don't matter anyway. <laughs> because yeah. I'm not here. So live in the now. So how can you learn to live in the now? Simple things. When you're washing your hands, mm-hmm. pay attention to the water. How does it feel? Is it warm? Is it cold? Same Mm -hmm. thing if you're shampooing your hair or having someone else shampoo it. Really start to feel things. Uh, If you're walking barefoot, and my neighbors, they always tease me because I'm always barefoot. If you're walking Mm -hmm. barefoot, how does does the grass feel? Is it sticky? Is it soft? And that's how you can start to begin to live in a now. Stop judging your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Nothing you think is wrong. Don't judge your thoughts. Yeah. Just let it come in and let it go out. And then you can also, part of this awareness is that who is really thinking this? Mm -hmm. Is it the, is it the seven-year-old that didn't get the ice cream and now thinks they're never going to get anything in life? (laughs) Right. Right. Or who, who is thinking this? And then when you can address who's thinking this, then you can have that conversation. Right. Have a conversation with your younger self. Mm-hmm. There's an exercise that I do where you can, you, well, I have my clients take a few deep breaths and then you sit in the chair and beside you is your seven-year-old self. What would you say to him or her? You have that conversation mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. you have your 15-year-old self because now you're growing. Things have changed. What would you say to that? And to your yeah. 21-year-old self, what would you say to them now? And that is a very freeing exercise. Absolutely. It my, sounds like it. <laughs> I hear things like, it wasn't your fault. Mm-hmm. You are beautiful. You did the best you could. You tried. It's going to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. These are yeah. the things I start hearing my clients say to their younger self. And Absolutely. it's a very freeing. And you can do that yourself. You don't need to have someone. You can mm-hmm. do it. Absolutely. What other techniques would you suggest that would actually help along their journey? Yeah, there's a uh, emotional freedom techniques. I'm a national uh, master practitioner of that as well. And you can do that yourself. It's tapping. I don't know if you've heard of tapping, but it's tapping. Yeah. Um, Wayne Dyer, if you've ever heard of him, he used it a lot. Elania Van Zant use it. Uh, Les Brown, a lot of Tony Robbins, a lot of people use uh, this tapping. And mm-hmm. you're able to do that yourself. Uh, there's an app called um, the Tapping Solution app. Mm-hmm. And you can go download that app and it will help you 
do judge what you're feeling and it'll help you release some of the emotions and you can do that too and that app is free oh okay and what's that app called again tapping solution the tapping, tapping solution. solution app yes okay. and you can do that uh and you can google it learn more you know information is only mm -hmm. as powerful as the actions you take once you get it right absolutely and one of the things i constantly do is i'm constantly learning mm -hmm. new techniques i'm learning constantly oh how how can this help me uh mm -hmm. and you start to learn these techniques and you start to listen to the people who've been down you listen mm -hmm. to the people how did they get through it what did they do and right. you'll start changing your playlist on youtube and TikTok. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> well, that is all that I have for today, Victoria. And I thank you very much. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? The one thing that I'd like to add to everyone is I see you, you matter, and you are enough. Don't let anyone tell you different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And how can all the viewers and listeners get a hold of you? Yes. My handle is just ask Victoria. So you can find me on TikTok under just ask Victoria. You can find me on Instagram, just ask Victoria with the underscore Facebook. So all of the social medias, you can find me that way. You can also send my email is uh, Victoria at just ask Victoria.com. You can email if you'd like to ask me any questions, but social media or email are the best ways. Absolutely. Good to know. Thank you again so much for your time. And I'm sure there's a lot of listeners that needed this. So thank you so much. And everyone else, have a wonderful day and stay blessed. Stay awesome. Keep magnifying your dreams. Thank you. <laughs>